الحمد للہ نعبد و نستعین و نستغفر و نؤمن به و نتوکل علیہ و نعوذ باللہ من شرور انفسنا و من سیئات اعمالنا من يهده اللہ فلا مدل له و من یدلل فلا هادی له و نشد ان لا الہ الا اللہ وحده لا شریک له و نشد ان محمد عبده و رسول بالحدا و دین الحق ارسله صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم و علی آلہ و اصحاب یجمعین و بارک و سلم و سلی علیہ ان اللہ و ملائکتہو یسلون علی النبی یا ایوہ الذین آمنوا صلو علیہ و سلمو تسلیما اللہم صلی علی سیدنا و مولانا محمد و علی آل سیدنا و مولانا محمد و بارک و سلم و سلی علیہ My honorable brothers and sisters and listeners of Radio Dawn Assalamu alaikum Today's topic is on Zuhud It is on Zuhud It's actually based on a book written by Ibn Abi Dunya Shortening Long Hopes Shortening Long Hopes It's available outside for you when you go, please um, do purchase. I believe the price is 250 Now, what does this person actually write in this, in this book? Well, before I go into, into that, you need to understand that Ibn Abidunya passed approximately 11 to 1200 years ago. 11 to 1200 years ago. And he felt that the people of his time were getting stuck into the dunya. And they were becoming greedy. They wanted to live forever. They wanted to amass wealth. And they didn't have the love of each other as taught by the Prophet, peace be upon him. And that they had long hopes. That's the title, long hopes. And this book, he then wrote how to shorten those long hopes. And there are approximately 300 ahadith in the original book. And this has been translated by Dr. Musharraf Hussain. And he's reduced down to only 40 uh, ahadith. Um, so they're selected in their usefulness. Now, long hopes means that we, we're born, we understand dunya, and we start liking the dunya. We like it because we can taste it. We like it because we wear it. We like it because we drive in it. We like it because we live in it. And the more we live the dunya, the more we love it. And the more longer plans we make. And we have long plans. And then those long plans entail what? I need to amass this many property. I need to have this many businesses. I need to gather this much wealth. And these are long hopes. Which do what? They bring enmity between brothers. And when each person develops those same long hopes of greed, of wanton, of selfishness, brothers end up fighting brothers. Parents fight children. And the society falls apart the way we are practicing. And we actually see this today in and around us. And people think that we have a very long time before we die. We'll do good deeds afterwards. Let me achieve this and then I'll do the next thing. Let me achieve this and next. Why? Because we're young. We're strong and we feel this youth and this strength is going to last forever. But that's a fallacy. That is it's untrue. We all understand it. We know it. But we don't want to absorb it. And another meaning of Zohud is disliking the world and turning away from it. Disliking the world and turning away from it. And somebody else has done that Zuhud is emptying the heart of that which one does not possess. If you don't have it, don't have greed for it. If you have a small car and you start yearning for a better, bigger one, that goes against Zuhud. Zuhud is not to yearn for something that you don't have. And to dislike the world and turn away from it. Now, whilst I was growing up, I heard from people that reject the dunya, dunya is horrible, etc. 
don't plan for tomorrow because you don't know whether you're going to live till tomorrow, etc. And I grew up understanding the wrong idea about Zuhud. Zuhud is not about rejecting the dunya totally. Zuhud is about living in the dunya, using whatever Allah has given you, but not loving it. But not loving it. That attachment which we develop, that is the problem. That love for the dunya is the problem. Not the dunya itself, we can use it. Because, you know, there's a, a charity, a Christian charity, and their logo is, motto is what? We believe in life before death. We Muslims always say we believe in life after death, life after death etc. But they're saying, look, we believe in life before death. And it's a charity to help poor people. We need to understand life is a blessing. Allah's given us life. We should live it. And live it the way Allah wanted us to live it. He gives us food. We are to enjoy this food. He gives us clothes and other blessings. We're to use them. But zuhud here is not to love them. So that if we have to give it up for any sake, we can't. We clutch onto it. We hold on to it. That is where the understanding comes about. Let me tell you for a story. There's a, a person who was a, a pious person, a very successful businessman. In the olden days when um, ships were used for cargo, etc., somebody came to him and said, Sheikh, I've heard bad news. Your ship has sunk, laden with all the goods it was returning back from, from another country. He closes his eyes, focuses on his heart, and he goes, It doesn't matter. My heart is busy in the remembrance of Allah. He did not go into shock and go, I'm being devastated, as we would do today. He looks at his heart, focuses on it, and says, it doesn't matter. My heart is busy in the remembrance of Allah. A short while later, that same news bearer came back again. And he goes, Oh, Shaykh, no, 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 I was mistaken. It wasn't your ship, it was somebody else's. Your ship has come to shore without any problems. Again, he stops, focuses on his heart, and he says, It doesn't matter. My heart is still busy in the remembrance of Allah. Now, this is the understanding of Zuhud that you live in the dunya you earn it by legal means, by halal means but you don't feel attached to it and it's that attachment which is the problem that we have that greed which causes enmity amongst brothers and sisters Imam Ahmad has divided Zuhud into three parts one, he says, Zuhud of everyday people, which is to stay away from haram. To stay away from haram. That is the, the basic level of Zuhud, which majority of the Muslims practice. And this is the Zuhud of ordinary people. The second Zuhud is to avoid excess in all the permissible things. What is permissible? We avoid excess. We use it the right amount. When we eat, we don't overeat. When we go to buy clothes, we don't buy the most expensive clothes there are. But we see how much Allah is giving us. And according to that, we spend moderately. If somebody gives somebody a small salary, then he's going to buy something more simple. If somebody's on a few hundred thousand pounds a year salary, he'll buy something of better quality, but to him it'll be moderate quality. And so in his heart, moderation is what needs to be there. Thirdly, zuhud is to leave everything that distracts one from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If it distracts you from Allah, avoid it. And this is the zuhud of special people. According to the Sufiya, everything that leads you away from Allah is haram. Everything that brings you close to Allah is wajib. They have two categories. The fuqaha have many categories. Fard, wajib, sunnah mu'akda, sunnah ghair mu'akda, mubah, etc, etc. 
But the, according to the Sufiya, two categories. Something that leads you towards Allah, do it. Because you need to get closer to Allah. If it takes you away from Allah, haram, leave it. Stay away from it. And hence here it is, something which takes you, distracts you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you avoid it altogether. And the Quran talks about our condition of our hearts. And it says, Nay, you prefer the worldly life, yet the afterlife is better and everlasting. And again, Say the worldly provisions are little and the afterlife is better for the God conscious. We need to understand that. That those of us who love this dunya, you need to understand what is it we're loving. Let's take, you know, the best watch, a Rolex. What is it made out of? Metal. Metal comes from where? The ground. Ultimately, it is dust. We might like a Rolls Royce. Prepared form, in its flashy form, it's fantastic. But what is its reality? Again, metal comes from where? The ground. And what comes from the ground ultimately is dust. Our mansions, huge castles, palaces, what are they made out of? Bricks and mortar from the earth. They are dust. So do we, brothers and sisters, want to love and clutch onto dust? This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Tirmizi Sharif. If this dunya and what is inside it had a value equivalent to the wing of a mosquito, a non-Muslim would not have got a sip of water. If according to Allah, this dunya had value equivalent to the wing of a mosquito. A non-believer would not get a sip of water. So to Allah, this dunya means nothing. Why? Because he can see its reality. Its reality is dust. What do we need to do? So Allah is saying again and again, love me. Attach yourself with me. For I, Allah, am everlasting. If you love what is perishable, you will perish. If you love what is eternal, then the hereafter you will live eternal lives in peace and comfort. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to understand that and to develop zuhud and to use the dunya the way Allah intended, but not to love it. بارك الله لنا ولكم في القرآن الرزيم ونفعنا وإياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم إنه تعالى جواد كريم مالك بالرؤوف الرحيم